A simple analogy is that if you cook with a pan on the stove and you finish cooking, uh, you wouldn't reach down and immediately touch the pan because it's still going to be hot. The same is true for a nuclear reactor. Uh, the reactor really is just a heat device that's producing uh, energy that we then convert ultimately into electricity. And um, so when the fission process stops, when the reactor shuts down, um, you know, the rods are inserted and the reactor is, is what we call shut down. Well, there's still residual heat and that's what we're looking at in Japan right now is the removal of that latent heat from the fission products. With respect to our uh, current fleet of nuclear reactors in the U.S., there's 104 operating nuclear reactors and those all have been reviewed and licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission under a stringent uh, licensing process. And so I have absolute confidence in the, um, the safety and the ability of our uh, plants in the U.S. to withstand any uh, credible accidents. Uh, so I'm not intimately familiar with the licensing basis in Japan, uh, but I can speak to the one here in the States, and that depends a lot on where the reactor is sited. So when a reactor applies for a license, they uh, review the site where the reactor will be put, um, they do an environmental assessment, figure out what the credible accidents with regards to uh, earthquakes, uh, possible tsunamis, other natural phenomena that may take place, uh, tornadoes, and then they uh, purposely go through and design and analyze the plant to make sure that it can withstand and uh, still function through any of those postulated scenarios. We have taken some measures since 9-11 where uh, we've done some assurance that American nuclear plants would still function uh, with a loss of off-site power. And that was all uh, predicated on terrorist activities, but presumably that would apply to uh, the same information, the same knowledge that we learned through that exercise would apply to uh, uh, the scenario that would have happened in Japan. So we worry about uh, if all off-site power is lost, the plant needs to be able to respond in a manner that safely shuts down the plant and stabilizes all systems until power can be restored to the site. You have to have some means of getting water in to cool them, at least for light water design plants like what we're talking about in the U.S. and uh, the Japanese plants. Uh, so you need some uh, mode of force, typically a pump, to get the water into the system to provide the cooling. But we've got redundant safety systems in place so that we have a, a high level of assurance that should those systems be needed, uh, one or more of them will be available to function as, as necessary to provide the uh, necessary cooling. One of the areas in which um, the next generation of reactors is significantly improved relative to today's reactors is that they incorporate passive safety systems. And so these passive safety systems allow the plant to undergo an event and essentially without any operator action for 72 hours they maintain cooling. And so those systems um, in some sense would have mitigated what we saw in Japan because there would have been no operator action needed for at least 72 hours. And uh, that's not to say that the event that took place in Japan would have not occurred. It would have lessened our uh, need to respond within that initial 72-hour period.